Hi, this is Kim. Well, this podcast is brought to you by Majuwa Tivet College, and it specifically relates to income tax and six for South African Tivet Colleges. In this presentation, I'm going to tackle question 6.1 relating to November 2016 previous question paper. I'm going to make reference to SICA student handbook, and I'm specifically going to look at the South African Income Tax Act. I'm hoping to address the following subject outcomes and uh, learning outcomes. Students should be able to determine tax consequences of leases at the end of this presentation. And furthermore, it is expected that students will be able to determine the tax consequences of rental expenses and determine the tax consequences of lease premium. I'm going to take you through to question six. There you go, question six, that's currently what I'm doing. I want, to, I want us to focus on question 6.1. We have construction arising from the following uh, transactions for the year ended 28 February 2015. 6.1 CFW construction entered into a lease agreement with Jade Properties on the 1st of September to lease a factory building for 20 years from that date. In terms of the lease agreement, CFW construction must pay a lease premium of 120,000 on the 1st of September 2014 and a monthly rent of 8,000 from that date. I'd like to bring to your attention the fact that there are two amounts that would like to address the tax consequences of. The first amount relates to a lease premium and it's an amount of 120,000. The second amount relates to a monthly rent and it's an amount of 8,000. I'd like to start with uh, what I consider to be the easy amount and that is the monthly rental. Remember in accounting, if you are required to do the income statement and you're required to determine the uh, monthly uh, rental, you would have taken the monthly rental and you would have multiplied by the number of months for which the business incurred the rental. In this case, remember our year of assessment ends on the 28th of February 2015. It commences on the 1st of March 2014. However, the rental was paid from the 1st of September 2014. So if you do your calculations, you realize that from the 1st of September 2014 until 28th February 2015, accounts to six months. So we're simply going to take the six, the 8,000 and multiply it by six in order to determine tax consequences relating to the monthly rental. I quickly want to do the calculation on the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm simply going to say the rent expense. Now I'm calculating, I'm answering the question. I'm going to say equals to, it was 8,000. I'm going to multiply that by six for six months. Let's quickly go back to our question. Remember, we are required to determine the tax implication. So that's essentially what we're doing. We determine the tax implication. This amount will be deductible against taxable income. We do not have any income items. Therefore, I'm going to leave that amount at 48,000. What I'm saying exactly is if we had income items, I was going to reflect by a negative that that amount should be deductible from whatever income items which would have been provided. But in this case, if it's not provided, it doesn't matter. These are deductions. So I'm just going to leave rent expense uh, like that. I just quickly want us to go to the presentation so that we can discuss the theory and uh, arriving at uh, appropriate tax consequences relating to the rental expense. First of all, I'd like to bring to your attention the fact that I used the general deduction formula, that is section 11A, to determine the tax consequences relating to rent expense. 11A addresses expenses and losses, which are actually incurred by the taxpayer uh, in the production of income, but it excludes uh, expenses and, and, and losses that are, are capital in nature. So essentially what 11A does, it says uh, a taxpayer will be permitted to detect expenses and losses uh, in determination of his 
taxable income if those losses and expenses were actually incurred by the taxpayer in the production of income and if those expenses and losses were not capital in nature. So in order to make this applicable, I quickly want us to go to question six. The monthly rental, definitely it's an expense. Yes, it's incurred by the taxpayer who's CFW in this case. Yes, uh, it has been incurred from the 1st of uh, September 2014. That is the commencement of the lease agreement. It's in respect of the factory building. Therefore, certainly that tells us that uh, CFW has the intention to produce uh, income because that expense is in respect of the factory building. This expense is certainly not capital in nature. Remember, normally the expenses that are not taken into the balance sheet like your uh, uh, assets are not uh, capital in nature. So essentially what I'm saying is this expense, it's not going to be taken to the uh, balance sheet. Therefore, it's not capital in nature. However, if we're talking about a factory building itself, the expense to acquire the factory building, the expenditure to, to purchase the factory building, that expenditure would be capital in nature and would be taken to the balance sheet. So just so that you're not lost into translation, that amount, it's revenue in nature. Therefore, it was deductible in terms of Section 11A. I've already determined the tax implications uh, earlier on. Moving along swiftly, the next item we'd like to address is the 120 relating to the lease premium. For tax purposes, we're going to employ Section 11F to determine tax consequences relating to the lease premium. I'd like to take you to the presentation slide addressing the tax consequences relating to the lease premium. I'm going to use what we call Section 11F, which basically grants an allowance for a lease premium. Just to cut the story short, the allowance will be uh, a, a deductible item against the taxpayer's uh, taxable income. So it says the allow for the allowance to be granted, uh, that item must relate to the premium that is paid by the taxpayer for the right of use or occupation of land or buildings used or occupied for the production of income or from which income is derived. Let's go quickly make that applicable in our given question. Remember it says it has to be a premium. Certainly it's a lease premium. It must be paid for, for the right of use or occupation of a building or land. In this case, it's a factory building. So it qualifies and uh, CFW must produce income. Certainly CFW intends to produce income uh, from the factory building. So that uh, lease premium qualifies uh, to be permitted an allowance in terms of Section 11F. What are the tax consequences? Let's go back to the presentation slide. Now, the next thing we're going to address the tax implications uh, of Section 11F. So, yes, an allowance relating to the premium will be granted to taxpayer CFW in this case. And the allowance will be limited to the greater of. So when we're going to compare two, two, two things, uh, two amounts or two figures, and we're going to take the greater of the two. You see I'm going to address Roman figure one and Roman figure two. We're going to calculate the amounts relating to the two, and then we're going to take the higher of the two. Let's quickly address them. The first release, it says you're going to take the premium. You're going to divide the premium by the number of years for which the taxpayer is entitled to the occupation or use. Let's quickly go to the information. So you're going to take the 120,000, it's clear, and uh, CFW is entitled to occupy the factory building for 20 years. So you're simply going to take the 120, you're going to divide by 20 years. Remember, after you've divided by 20 years, you're going to obtain what we call uh, a monthly, a yearly, apologies, you're going to obtain what we call a, a, a yearly, uh, lease premium. Let me just quickly go to the, to the spreadsheet and do the calculations. So this is lease premium. Allow me to insert another column for calculation purposes. Insert, there you go. I'm going to insert. Remember, uh, let me close this a little. That's the final tax consequences. And in this column, I'm going to do calculations so that you can understand how I obtain the amount. So if I were to do calculations, the first uh, uh, calculation relating to 
relating to Roman figure one, relating to Roman figure one. So I'm going to say, um, um, I'm going to say limited to limited to the greater of, so that you can actually get to see how we did calculations. Limited to the greater of uh, premium, premium divided by number of years. occupied something of that sort of. um, so I'm drawing your attention to the fact that the first item will relate to I'm just going to write one there we're going to compare its uh, premium divided by the number of years uh, uh, for which the building is occupied so I wanted to cut it short so allow me to calculate here I'm going to say equal I'm going to say 120 so essentially it will be equals to, remember it will be 120, this is the least premium. I'm going to divide it by 20 years because that's what we are specifically told. We have to apportion this, remember the lease commenced on September, so that would be, we're going to multiply this by 6 over 12 because we want to determine um, the lease premium for 6 months because remember it commenced on uh, September 2014. So essentially that's how we're going to determine that amount. I'm going to say equals to, we haven't taken the final amount to that column to that, we're going to take the final amount. We're still doing calculations. Let's see what number two relates to number two. Number two says, yes, you're going to take the premium once more again, because that's exactly what we want to calculate. You're going to divide by 25 years. 25 years, it's fixed. It's a fixed rule. And then you're going to multiply by the number of years. So I'm simply going to say, 120, remember we're still doing the least premium. I'm going to divide by 25. We specifically told it's a rule. I think uh, tax is rule driven. There are certain rules that are specifically embedded in a certain provisions. So in this case, this is a fixed rule that we must always observe when we uh, determine uh, the least premium in terms of section 11F. So we're still going to multiply by that six divide by 12 the same uh, rationale should be applied as i explained in calculating number one above equals two so we're going to take the greater of the two the greater of the two is that three thousand so i'm going to take that three thousand so your total tax implications i'm going to say sum of enter there you go so the sum of will essentially be uh, this the total will be um deductible deductible from income from the taxpayer's income that's essentially what we're required to calculate i'm just going to highlight it there you go that's essentially how we're supposed to go about let me quickly go to the presentation slide for the last time remember we we're saying we're going to deduct the greater of i've already explained that or the second part the second part relates to premium divided by 25. Remember, this is a rule that is provided in section 11F. Okay, thank you guys.